Okay, jumping into today's devotional. Today we're going to do a Buddhist koan. I believe that messaging comes from spirit in many forms. And Buddhist koans are fantastic. They make you think. Thankfully, this one is also unpacked by the author, Jerry Wick. I actually used to meditate at his dojo in Boulder. Fantastic gentleman. Case 33, Sancho's Golden Carp. Preface to the assembly. Encountering strength, one is meek. Encountering tenderness, one is tough. When two strengths collide, there is always damage. Tell me, how should they accommodate each other? Buddhism, especially Zen, I should be specific. This is Zen Buddhism, very energetically focused. And for them, less is always more. I'm more of a more is more person, so so ways to go. Too many words. Okay, main case, attention. Sancho asked Seppo, a golden carp passes through the nets. I wonder what he has for food. Seppo said, I'll wait until you get out of the net, then I'll tell you. Two masters talking, Zen masters, always messing with each other. So let's say that again, a golden carp passes through the nets. I wonder what he has for food. So the answer Sancho gives to Seppo is, I'll wait for you to get out of the net and I'll tell you. So he's immediately jumping to, you're talking about yourself being the golden carp. Sancho says, a good teacher of 1,500 monks doesn't even know what we're talking about. Seppo replied, for this old monk as head of the temple, affairs do multiply. Appreciatory verse. At first, Ascending the three waterfalls, clouds and thunder both give the send off. Jumping, leaping splendidly, his great function is seen. Burning his tail, he clearly passes beyond the gate of you. Fine fish are never kept in a pickle jar. The mellow old man does not startle the crowd. I love that, the mellow old man does not startle the crowd. We don't think of that as a good quality. But may the meek shall inherit the earth. That's what it's pointing at. Used to meet great opponents, he is fearless from the start. Flapping as lightly as a flag in the wind, he weighs more than a thousand pounds. Overcoming the physical rules of the world. His name is known across the four seas. Is anyone his equal? Though the eight winds blow, he stands alone, unmoved. This Cohen is about skillful means, about skillfully responding to every situation as it arises. As it says in the preface, when somebody comes on strong, retreat is effective. In the face of conciliation, strength is called for. When two people respond with strength, they collide and there's always damage. I can think of many examples of these. Perhaps you're in chronic disagreement with your partner or spouse and there's no room to maneuver. This is like two massive pillars leaning on each other. What should you do? If you are able to retreat from your position, the other pillar has no resistance and has to fall. And then there is space for your partner to also shift his position. Sancho, a well-accomplished disciple of Rinzai, came to Seppo and boasted. A golden cart passes through the nets. I wonder what he has for food. In other words, I've passed through the barrierless barriers set by Buddhas and ancestors. What are you going to do with me now? So he's saying, you know, I'm so badass and like, I don't even get caught in the net. Seppo points out he's still stuck in his arrogance and pride. I'll wait until you get out of the net and then I'll tell you. So in other words, his come from right away told the master that he was already in the net because it had arrogance. That's great. But Sancho meets him again with strength. A good teacher of 1500 monks doesn't even know what we're talking about. Seppo seems to retreat, but there are thorns in the mud. He says, I'm very busy. I have a lot on my mind. Is Seppo conceding to Sancho? We have to know how to respond appropriately to the conditions as they present themselves. Acting the same way in every situation isn't appropriate. Every situation is different. Every student is different. Responding appropriately is called skillful means. And it's probably one of the most difficult and dangerous aspects of our practice. If one is deluded about one's understanding, skillful means can be used as an excuse for one's own abusive behavior. 
it's not easy to know how to swell and I see a lot of that in business. If you can get what you want out of people, you're considered skillful, even if you had to lie to them to do it. It's not always easy to know how to swallow and digest our practice. It's not always easy to take. To integrate it as our life is even more difficult. We always want some safe refuge that we can hold on to that, so that we can always know beforehand what's appropriate. We want to hold on to this ego grasping self in order to feel more comfortable, but it doesn't work. We continue to suffer and we continue to cause harm. We all know it doesn't work, but still we keep doing it. Seppo could beat the student around the ears if he wanted to, but instead he just says, for this old monk as head of the, head of the temple, affairs do multiply. In other words, I have to get back to my other work and removes himself. Basically, I'm too busy to continue the conversation is what he says. Is this meek old man really a teacher of 1500 monks? At the end of the gateless gate, Master Moomin cautions, the further you advance on the path, the more confused it becomes. In the end, if you retreat, the less clearly you perceive the path. If you neither advance nor retreat, you're like a breathing dead person. So how do you practice this living Zen? Master Moomin is cutting off all our avenues of escape, just like Seppo is doing to Sancho. In the end, like Sancho, you have to ultimately face yourself. Seppo was not releasing Sancho from further accomplishing himself. Seppo's words were not ceding to Sancho. They cut off Shanso's, Sancho's swollen head and gave him no leg to stand on. Having no safe place to rest, how can you be the golden carp that passes through the netless net? That is insightful for me in ways I can't even describe at this moment. Simmer for a second. I've been wondering about certain behaviors at work that I show and exhibit, and I'm realizing that they make sense in response to what's showing up. And sometimes shutting things down is the best way to handle the situation. So with that, we're going to jump into a little our Louise Hay uh, power card. It's an affirmation for the day, I guess. It says, divine wisdom guides me. I am guided throughout this day in making the right choices. Divine intelligence continually guides me in the realization of my goals. I am safe. I take it. All right. I was going to read the flip book, but I think I got to go get on the road. I think my husband's about to chase me out of here. Get your, get your butt on the road. You'll be stressed. I love you. Thank you for being here with me. Till the next time, be well. Be good to you.